dear friends welcome to this edition of uh, of vbs anatoma here we are covering a series of uh, gross anatomy topics as a uh, youtube videos we are in the head and neck region and uh, today's we will cover an important uh, uh, paranasal sinus namely the maxillary sinus not only from the clinical uh, point of view this is an important sinus along with the nasal cavity infection this sinus is quite common to get infected to that extent it is very very important to know its anatomy but then beyond that uh, it is a common uh, longest question in your examination uh, some aspect of it may also appear as a short essay uh, question invariably the walls uh, may be asked for image based mcqs so i have given a few image based mcqs at the end of the uh, video for your uh, you can go through that now let's discuss where is this maxillary lo sinus located what is its shape and uh, how is it oriented with reference to other structures in the uh, region of the uh, face now that is the maxillary sinus so this is like anterior view of the uh, dry skull uh, i have encircled the maxillary sinus of both sides right and the left uh, you will notice that this skull has been slightly uh cut at very specific uh, points very neatly uh particularly in in today's discussion the lateral edge of the maxillary sinus has been neatly uh, cut and uh, hinged out uh, that we will see in the next uh, slide the advantage of uh, now below this is the mouth uh, and its contents an important uh, immediate uh, uh, inferior relation uh right above the maxillary sinus is the orbit and the contents respectively right side right orbit left side the left orbit and uh in between the two maxillary sinuses uh is the nasal cavity and its contents now you see as i told you in the previous slide the one edge of the maxillary sinus has been neatly trimmed and reflected a uh upwards that is the uh shown by the yellow arrow the blue arrow points to the cavity of the maxillary uh, sinus uh, you, because of the cavity in nature you can already appreciate an anterior wall uh, a posterior wall a superior wall and a floor but not clearly seen here is the base we will go into the more de finer details uh, uh, in the next few slides now you see i have taken a slightly blown up uh, view of the um, area that is shown if you view uh, uh, along the uh, blue arrow so what i have done is i have moved the camera in the direction of the blue arrow and i have been able to capture the base of the maxillary sinus you can also see in the base uh, the maxillary hiatus very beautifully uh, seen as a dark area yeah a few words about the posterior orientation uh, the blue arrow is the posterior wall of the infratemporal uh, wall of the maxillary sinus the red arrow is the pterygoid process uh, that's a part of the sphenoid bone and the yellow arrow in particular is is a gap between the maxilla and the pterygoid process that is a fissure actually called the pterygo maxillary fissure you must have seen this in the infratemporal fossa where you saw the maxillary artery uh, going into the uh, uh, the pterygopalatine uh, fossa next let's examine the walls a little more in detail uh, 
Now, once again, in an overview, it may look like a repetition of what I told you, but now I am repeating with very clearly pointed labels. That's the floor. Apex is lateral. It is uh, at the zygomatic process of the maxilla. More often, it projects into the uh, zygomatic bone also. Base is what I showed you in the previous slide uh, along that blue arrow in the previous photograph where the cavity was opened out. Uh, when you view from that angle, you will, you will actually see the uh, base from the uh, interior of the maxillary cavity. Roof is a plate of bone, the orbital plate of the maxilla that separates the maxillary sinus from the orbital uh, cavity. Next, there is an anterior surface, which is the facial surface. Not shown here is the posterior surface, but I showed you in a separate slide in a previous uh, uh, slide photograph. Now, let's examine one aspect a little in detail, the roof. The roof is basically the floor of the orbital cavity. That means it's a common piece of bone, the so-called orbital plate of the maxilla. It is not only the roof of the maxilla, maxillary sinus, but it is also the floor of the orbital uh, cavity. This is the, uh, it's a large uh, sheet of uh, bone. This has been shown in the, the photograph as a double arrow. That means the plate in between the two arrows, yellow arrow and the uh, blue arrow. Now that's the orbital plate of the maxilla. Next, one of the important features of this orbital plate is the groove, infraorbital groove that contains the nerve of the same name, infraorbital nerve, which comes forward and opens at the infraorbital foramen. Next, the anterior wall or the facial wall or the wall that is uh, presenting in the face or anteriorly is shown here by two arrows. Remember this particular skull which I am demonstrating the lateral edge of the maxillary sinus has been snipped off and hinged out. As a result, uh, one part of the anterior wall is in this side and the other part is on the uh, main maxilla. This is just to keep in mind. Next, let's come back to the posterior wall. Uh, I will now show you the details with the clear labeling. Infratemporal surface of the maxilla I mentioned this in the previous uh, discussion. Now that's the pterygoid process and that's the pterygomaxillary fissure. I mentioned that through the pterygomaxillary fissure, you will reach the pterygopalatine fossa. Uh, it is in this uh, yeah, fossa, you will see the terminal branches of the maxillary artery, the pterygopalatine ganglion um, and the branches of uh, uh, the maxillary uh, nerve. Now, as I told you, the uh, importance of uh, this uh, uh, area, we can appreciate certain details of some of the walls in a much better way if we have a look at some of the uh, cross sections. Here is a cross section through the head area. You can see the uh, coronal section this is. You can see the uh, section of the brain at the top but right below is the nasal cavity and on either sides of the nasal cavity is the maxillary sinus. Much below is the oral cavity and the tongue. Now that being the overview, let's see by labeling, let's try to identify each one uh, very, very specifically. Now you see that's the floor, the maxilla, the floor of the maxilla. It's basically the palatine uh, process of the maxilla. Uh, it's roughly the area where the alveolar arch the maxilla of the maxilla is located and a small bit of adjacent bone. Next, that is the medial wall of the maxilla. Now that wall is a common wall. It's a partition between the medial wall, that is, the, it is a partition between uh, 
the maxilla and the nasal cavity that means medial to this uh, wall is the nasal cavity lateral to the wall is the maxillary uh, sinus remember in the upper part of the medial wall is located the uh, maxillary hiatus that means uh, there is a little difficulty in gravitated drainage because the uh, opening is at a higher level more closer to the roof than the floor as a result in the event that there is an infection in this uh, maxillary sinus and pus or uh, liquid builds up uh, it is uh, a little difficult for it to drain because it has to depend upon the ascending ciliary current of the mucous membrane uh, to throw away these materials sometimes you know this is beyond the uh, limit of the ciliary current in which case uh, the ENT surgeon will advise the patient uh, one besides the steam inhalation and other, other uh, medicines they will say uh, subsequent to steam inhalation try to uh, rest your head on one side so that the side where there is an infection uh, can be up that means between the two sides if say the left side is the infection and the right side is clear then the uh, doctor will say post uh, in, uh, inhalation of steam rest on the right side so that the left sinus can be drained by gravity if both the sinuses are involved which is quite common alternatively uh, in between the steam inhalations uh, the you will have to uh, turn to this side or to the opposite side that's the medial wall that's the lateral wall or a lateral border remember we have an anterior wall and a posterior wall both the walls almost merge to form a lateral border so it is more a border rather than a wall now that's the point you need to uh, remember the the facial surface uh, it takes a turn and then becomes the infratemporal surface it, therefore it is more a border than a wall next as i told you this is not enough simply knowing the gross anatomy looking at cross sections may not be enough what we really need to know at the anatomy level is these details we should be able to identify in some of the imaging uh, sections maybe a ct or an mri or what or an endoscopy some amount of uh, knowledge is required because in in actual practice we are going to see more of these image based um, anatomy in the, in the clinical practice rather than uh, actually doing a surgery only those who finally take up ENT may go into surgery but in, in general practice uh, we are going to see more of imaging anatomy and its interpretation you see one side i have put the coronal section of the head next adjacent to it i have put a more or less it's from a different uh, uh, person altogether nevertheless a ct coronal section i've also added adjacent for comparison you see we will try to identify the points or the structures in both the um, photographs uh, simultaneously now that's the mouth cavity with the tongue in the floor i i have used a, a white uh, arrow on one side that is where the actual specimen is but on the uh, side of the x-ray or the ct i have replaced it with a red arrow this is because the white and black uh, gradient merges with the x-ray and therefore the details are lost next that's the nasal cavity um, I have just shown an area immediately below the inferior uh, turbinate or inferior concha. Then the maxillary sinus on either sides, that is the point of our current discussion. The ethmoidal sinus is right above, in between the nasal cavity and the orbital cavity. And lastly, the large uh, orbital cavity, one on either sides. A few more points that is the inferior concha, both sides. Remember, the uh, meatuses are immediately below it. Therefore, I am not showing another label. It's understood that the meatus is immediately below it. So, 
I will say inferior concha and the inferior meatus immediately below it. Middle concha and the middle meatus immediately below and medial to it. Superior concha and the superior meatus immediately below and medial to it. So all the concha and the meatus have been identified. Next, this is an imp important uh, component uh, which uh, is worth noting. In the ENT, the, the, the ENT person, uh, the specialist will uh, show this area and call it as uh, the osteomyatal complex. This is an important region where the maxillary sinus opens into the um, nasal cavity uh, through the lateral wall of the nasal cavity or through the medial wall of the maxillary sinus. Now it's called the osteomyatal complex. There are a number of structures in this complex. So I will I will discuss it at a later stage of this video. Similarly, another cross section and another corresponding horizontal um, uh, imaging. Here the point to note is the maxillary sinus. In both the cases, I have pointed it out. In the cross section, it is smaller, whereas in the um, uh, imaging that I have put the MRI, it's a slightly larger nasal cavity, both both photographs, and very specifically the medial wall that is shared between two cavities, the maxillary and the um, nasal cavity. Little more uh, detail. That's the maxillary sinus. That's the lateral wall of the external nose right in front of the sinus and that's the prominence this is more a, for a relative uh, orientation uh, just to give you a, 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 a little bit clarity this is how the sinus is identified when you view it uh, in a, a living individual uh, fr from the front that's the nasal septum the cartilaginous part of the nasal septum now we have few clinical points we are not coming to the end of the discussion but a few clinical points may be relevant and at this stage of the discussion you see the sinus because of its strategic location and its close vicinity immediately lateral to the nasal cavity plus it's a, you know difficult uh, to to drain that means as i told you the hiatus maxillary hiatus that opens into the nasal cavity is slightly at a higher level there is a high chance that pooling up of secretions can take place uh, hence gravity aided drainage may be difficult the sinus has to depend upon the upward running ciliary current for the uh, uh, for all its uh, drainage that is one aspect of it the other aspect of it is you see it can be subject to a number of uh, clinical problems notable of which include as I as I've shown you in this photograph uh, there is a, a red glow at the mucosa of course along with rhinitis you can have maxillary sinusitis either acute or chronic sinusitis basically the mucous membrane is inflamed hence I have marked it in red less commonly there could be a mucosal uh, that's also possible you see that uh, is the indication that here is an inflamed um, mucosa of the maxillary sinus secondary to the inflammation there can be accumulation of pus and the drainage may be a problem usually the drainage as i told you in the previous stages if it is uh, it's a, uh, not in a very extreme case it can be drained by steam and gravity aided of course with antibiotics and other support uh, however, if it is a very extreme case where the sinus is full and uh, in a bursting stage, maybe a trocar and cannula can be inserted into the cavity and uh, the pus can be drained with immediate relief. So these are some of the uh, possibilities we could consider for the maxilla uh, clinical aspect. So maxilla by its, the maxillary sinus by itself can be inflamed um, either viral or bacterial or whatever. But the point is, the maxilla can also be involved as a part of the overall involvement of the face, particularly in uh, facial fractures.
see a part of the maxilla may, a wall of the maxilla may get broken this is another quite common uh, problem with the uh, maxillary sinus remember the anterior and the posterior walls particularly of course the lateral the medial wall also has a large blood vessel if the anterior and the posterior walls are involved the the nerves and vessels particularly for, for relating to bleeding the anterior superior alveolar and the posterior superior alveolar vessels can get cut and that could add to the bleeding if the medial wall is uh, broken the corresponding blood vessels in the medial wall uh, will also be involved basically they are the same blood vessels that supply the uh, lateral wall of the nasal cavity I think it's time to go into a little more detail beyond this what I have given you uh, now because uh, uh, there is a stage where you know a little more detail may be warranted uh, especially if you are handling a large essay question you see the maxillary hiatus that I talked of needs a little more explanation here is a sagittal section of the uh, dry bone dry skull the nasal septum has been removed and the inferior concha the clipped part of the inferior concha is uh, there and that has been shown encircled by that uh, sir, uh, dotted dashed circle that is white red circle is the maxillary hiatus next in front of see this hiatus by itself if it is purely the maxilla bone that we are taking into consideration the hiatus is huge but in reality it is reduced because of the contribution of several other neighboring bones several other neighboring bones but before we go into that we will also identify the other uh, other hiatus here that is the sphenoparietal often we confuse one for the other but the sphenopalatin is always above and behind the maxillary hiatus in front is the opening of the nasolacrimal duct but it, this doesn't come in the um, middle meatus this comes in the inferior meatus therefore uh, it is uh, uh, away from our region of discussion the other contributors which reduce the size of the maxillary hiatus uh, is the uncinate process of the ethmoid bone shown by this label remember we are above the inferior concha that means we are in the middle meatus and the projecting piece of bone going down is the uncinate process of the ethmoid bone next the sphenopalatine is once again brought into the discussion only for reference now that's the maxillary hiatus additionally there are other contributors like for example the inferior concha makes a small contribution and the a small patch at the a uh, point where the inferior concha is attached to the maxilla that area is immediately in the lower margin of the uh, re reducing maxillary hiatus and it is also mentioned in books that there is a lacrimal bone contribution but i do not have an appropriate photograph to demonstrate that now you see uh, it is difficult in an intact skull to show all the walls especially on its interior we always show the walls from the exterior so i have made an effort i was wondering how to show the interior of the uh, maxillary uh, sinus then i got an idea uh, a lot of skulls are you know in the, in stages where it has been used for the years and need to be discarded but then i i realized these are the bones where these are the dry skulls where you know certain parts are missing and that gives us a window to see the uh, interior in further detail now here is one such uh, specimen virtually for all practical purposes a junk specimen ready to be thrown but in very beautifully i can see here the um, uh, lateral wall of the nasal cavity much more than the normal maxillary hiatus has been has been depicted because the adjacent bones have all broken therefore giving me a huge window through which i can see the anterior wall a little bit of the posterior wall tiny bit of the roof and maybe a little dark area which i should imagine as the apex of the um, maxillary sinus see that's the posterior wall that's the apex
likewise i got another skull another junk skull where the entire lateral wall of the nasal cavity is missing that means the medial wall is completely out so i have a very comfortable interior view of the uh, maxillary sinus once again i can see the apex at the upper lateral end the anterior wall in front the posterior wall behind roof above and above the roof is the orbital cavity now that's the posterior wall and above the roof is the orbit so many things are so beautifully seen uh, in an otherwise condemned piece of skull next let's zoom into this particular area particularly behind the posterior wall of the maxillary sinus i want your attention please note that the encircled area in red white dashed circle is the area i am now discussing that area is the pterygopalatine fossa its anterior wall is the posterior wall of the maxilla which we have talked of as the infratemporal surface of the maxilla now i am going to show you some other important walls and other structures watch carefully with me now you see that's the posterior wall of the maxillary sinus as already discussed that's the pterygoid process of the sphenoid bone that's the anterior wall of the uh, pterygoid process remember the pterygoid process is a lateral plate and a medial plate both the plates merge in the uh, in front and uh, that forms a short anti posterior wall of the pterygo uh, of the pterygo maxillary uh, fossa and opening into the pterygo maxillary fossa from the posterior are two structures one the nerve of the pterygoid canal and two the maxillary nerve from the maxillary there is a foramen which transmits the maxillary nerve into the pterygopalatine fossa the anterior opening and the nerve is shown in black both the nerves are shown in black next we are looking at the interior of the maxillary sinus by i i i, I showed you the first in the first beginning itself in skull where uh, the lateral edge has been trimmed off and reflected up now i have focused the camera from below to uh, upwards and you can see the roof of the um, uh, maxillary sinus that is the orbital plate of the maxilla very clearly floor just above the alveolar sockets and that is the roof because the camera is from is being shot from below upwards that is the roof now we have come to the end of the discussion i have given you a panoramic conducted tour of the uh, maxillary sinus as i took you around here and there where finer details were required i stopped just like a hop in hop out uh, tour of uh, uh, some big city wherever details are required we stop give more details and we proceed forwards now we will move move on to the next stage uh, this uh, image based mcqs may be useful to you for various entrance exams and uh, even for, for your routine uh, exams in the subject now mcq number 1 identify the pointed area now there are four options look at it carefully we have discussed this slide in detail in previous discussion i suggest you take some time because i may not be pausing for every slide adequately enough for you to focus and concentrate pause this video at that slide go through and then come to an answer answer keys are provided at the end of the discussion mcq number 2 this blue arrow what is that item what is that structure there are four options let me i mean think over and freeze your answer next another structure again the blue arrow what is that item four options think over come to a conclusion mcq number 4 ct head region you can see the once again the arrow is pointing to a partition what is that partition uh, i already clearly said what wall of the maxillary sinus is this
once again these are the options one of them is the correct answer um think and freeze your answer last mcq now this the wall that i have shown is um, which bone forms this particular uh, wall i repeat which bone forms this particular wall of the um, sinus now these are the answer keys again go back and check and then if necessary review with the discussion that way you will have a clear uh, idea uh, of uh, uh, clarifying the points uh, i hope you you benefited with this prosection on the maxillary sinus uh, for sake of simplicity i have used as far as possible only dry bones but remember there is a mucous membrane uh, on the top of these dry bones the mucous membrane and the uh, um, periosteum of the dry bone are fused to form a mucoperiosteum there is very little connective tissue in this area therefore that support is lost so a second point is when you transilluminate a maxillary sinus you will see several spots which are very very weak or maybe the bone is missing and only the mucosa is there just keep that in mind this is very very important uh, with the practice you will get to know these common uh, spots of very thin bone these are the spots through which the trochar and cannula can be passed for drainage of uh, the contents of the maxillary sinus uh, this is the uh, link or my email id if you have any points for feedback i will be happy to address them and a big thank you and i hope uh, you have all benefited by this uh, uh, lecture demonstration thank you